Ladies and gentlemen, can I have a warm round of applause for Julie Mack? Thank you, everyone. What he did not tell you is I developed an acute case of bronchitis over the weekend, so please forgive my voice and if I'm popping some of these little uh, sucrets and drinking some water. So I really like audience interaction. So hopefully by the end of the day, you guys are after the end of my presentation, you'll, have, you'll see some value in uh, what I'm going to explain to you. And just kind of give you a little bit of background on the FICO scoring model. Um, Everyone in here, I'm sure, has heard of FICO, and then there's this new Vantage score out and a couple other scores. Well, FICO was the original scoring model. And then, oh, probably about 10, 12 years ago, the three bureaus, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion said, hey, why are we paying these guys? Why don't we come up with their own score? Good idea, but they were all under contract, and they had a no-compete clause. So TransUnion's the one that's still holding on to some of their Vantage scores. If you go to their website, they're trying to sell you the Vantage score. In fact, that's what usually pulls up instead of FICO. Most, I would say about 98% of the lenders do not use the Vantage score. So basically, it's pretty worthless. So it's really not going to do people a whole heck of a lot to get it. Now, I assume everybody there has the 26 myth conceptions of credit as well, right? Okay. So if anyone has a question, just pop up. Um, when's the last time anybody here, everybody did a credit check on themselves? Uh, anybody within the last month? Good. Last week? Yeah, last six months? The last year. Okay. Do you guys know that you can get a free credit report from each bureau every 12 months? You're entitled to it under federal law. If you go to www.annualcreditreport.com, you can get a free credit report. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I suggest that. 85% of consumers have inaccurate information being reported on their credit. A lot of times you're merged with someone else's name, similar name, but unfortunately you inherit their bad credit. Now, the bureaus don't have a heck of a lot of interest in keeping your credit good. In fact, they actually make more money on consumers with bad credit. Can anybody guess why? Higher interest. Well, the bureaus don't insurance. make the higher interest rate, but they resell the information to people who are looking for consumers with bad credit so they can charge them a higher interest rate. Also, they're not getting paid to take off the derogatory information. The credit reporters pay them to put the information on. So basically, they're losing money every time an inquiry comes in. And they really don't like that, you know, because they have a really good business model. Currently, FICO just came out. Now, everybody, so everybody kind of understands about FICO. Um, FICO's coming out with some solutions, but it's a little bit late. For instance, they just announced that they're going to change some of their scoring models for anyone that's had a short sale or foreclosure, which affects most of Nevada, unfortunately, because we had a huge meltdown. I mean, it was nationwide. So currently, after seven years, the FICO, um, any bad credit or bad items that are on there will kind of wash itself off, with the exception of bankruptcies, which can stay on for 10 years, or collections, or excuse me, judgments or liens. Those typically stay on for 10 years. A lot of lenders will loan after four years, so those are constantly changing. So I just wish FICO had come to the party a little bit earlier and helped everybody out. Um, the minimum criteria needed to generate a credit score I have people that sometimes, believe it or not, come to me and they don't have a credit score. Well, in order to generate a credit score, you need to have a social security that's being reported to the bureaus, um, or you have to have an account that's open for, and being reported for six months, or potentially maybe no trade, trade lines been updated in six months. Believe it or not, there's some people out there that don't have a FICO and they have high assets. They just pay for cash. Unfortunately, that's usually the 1%. They usually have corporate credit because they have a business and they run things through there. But for the individuals that don't, those are the requirements to have a FICO score. So how some of the credit scoring model works, excuse me while I put this down. Is what does the score mean? It predicts the chance of a consumer becoming 90 days late or more on a particular loan obligation. 
sorry, we have to do it that way, each score is specific for each bureau. And this is very true. I always tell everyone, make sure you get a complete credit report from all three bureaus if you're going to be, a, you know, to make sure it's accurate. Some creditors only report to one bureau, some report to all three bureaus. I've seen people that have had a, hun a difference of 100 points in their scores because one bureau picked up a collection that the other two didn't. And that can be drastic. I mean, you don't want the bad news at the last minute. Scores range from 350 or 300 to 850 for classic FICO. The higher the score, the less odds of the default. And the score is usually generated by in information in that particular credit report at that point in time. The reason that this is really important is credit has no history or memory. What's on there one day can completely delete it and gone the next with a dispute. It's really amazing. So unless you have a credit report printed out at that point in time, you're not going to see what the score is. It can change. It's, it's constantly fluid. So anyway, these are just some, some of the score or the, you know, the odds. How FICO averages the score is they take a million consumers and put them in the same group that have similar backgrounds. It is possible to leapfrog onto another scorecard is what you want to do to raise your FICO score. So it's all about being smart and how we can do that. Okay, so these are the determining factors. As you can see, past delinquencies is the top factor. And a past delinquency could be yesterday. The FICO score has no memory, so it doesn't really know how to compute it. So it looks at anything as a past delinquency. Revolving debt ratio. So we'll go down here. Past delinquencies is 35% is the score. So you can see that that makes up a huge difference. Let me scroll through this so we can get to the final one. These are what I was talking about, how long delinquencies stay on the credit report. Any questions on this? Can everybody see it? I'm sorry. When you find a discrepancy on your personal credit score in any of the three bureaus, how do you get them, take them on? Because I've found, I've had problems doing that, and I, I want to know just exactly who the threat is. <coughs> Excuse me. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is your best friend. They really put the teeth in it. So what I would suggest is you write a letter to any bureau that's reporting the inaccurate information, tell them why the information's inaccurate, and ask them to delete it or update it. If they give you a denial, that gives you the chance to go directly to the credit furnisher. Request that the credit furnisher delete it or update it, whatever is appropriate. If they fail to do so, you can always open a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And they are really on top of things. I've really been surprised at how swift they move. What's a reasonable amount of time for that? What's a reasonable amount of time for this process? If you send them a letter, do you give them 30 days, 60 days? Uh, under federal law, they have 30 days to respond. To either deny it or explain why they're not going to do it. If you ever see the language in there on a dispute letter that comes back that says, Consumer Disputes meets FCRA. That means basically they've red flagged it and they've considered it frivolous and they will no longer be working on the item. So that can be very prob problematic as well. At that point, if it truly is inaccurate, I would greatly suggest, oh sorry, <laughs> I would greatly, highly suggest that you go directly to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and put a complaint in. I know that any bankers in here, they kind of shiver, shiver when they hear that word. Sorry, I know that's a nutty word for a lot of people, but they really do help the consumers quite a bit. Yes? So, based on your um, chart up there, mm -hmm. the late payments, is that considered 90 days or is that a 30 day late payment? 30 day late. Okay. Now, 30 day late comes to a really good question. Now, this is a, a insider's loophole I'm going to tell you about. So just remember, I do not practice credit repair. I do credit for the attorneys and the law firms, and we take a legal stance on it. 
Were you 28 days late or were you 30 days late? I just wanted to clarify that. Right. No, no, I'm not saying it was you particularly, but I'm just saying let's, for sake of argument, they can't legally report 30 days late. To meet the, f the federal requirements, you truly have to be 30 days late after that due date. So 31. 31, you were 30 days late. <laughs> then they can report it for seven years. And I'm sorry, a lot of people will tell you, and I hear loan officers say this all the time, and I just cringe. Well, write them a letter and tell them you've been a really good customer. Will they please take it off? Well, what you've done there is you just admitted guilt. All that's going to do is stay in your file and get flagged for the next seven years. Eventually, it will cycle out. The longer the age of the um, derogatory information, the less it impacts your FICO score. Every month, your score will start recovering a little bit, points by points. Maybe a year later, you might be back up 20 points. But the problem is, is um, I've seen a mispayment, like people in the 800s, their children forgot to return a library book and they didn't get the notices for whatever reason. They had a $10 fine hit their FICA or their FICO score, took them from an 800 down to a 620. Yeah, so it can happen, you know, because it was a minor child, so the parents were responsible for it. It's harsh, but unfortunately, we couldn't do anything about it because it was, you know, truly a derogatory and a collection. So, unfortunately, a lot of times life is not fair. Yes. I'm sorry, but can you just repeat the website? Was it annualcreditreport.com? Yes, annualcreditreport.com. Now, if you don't need all three of your bureau reports, I suggest you stagger them. Get one, one every quarter. Okay. Unless there's a suspicious, suspic sorry, with the wrong hardest, a reason why you need all three at once. Um, creditkarma.com truly does give you a free FICO score. So if you need a FICO score, you can go, please. You can do uh, creditkarma.com. If you want to, you can go ahead and scroll uh, through some of that. I have a that. question. Yes. What is the, uh, because I did the uh, uh, refinance my, uh, uh -huh. my home less than five months ago. They told me that uh, karma.com does not reflect the rent, the no. same. Exactly. Thing. Now I was going to get to that. The mortgage lenders have the ability to change the algorithm and look at a completely different scoring card. Creditkarma.com is the pure score directly from the bureaus. But a car lender or a mortgage is going to change the algorithm on the scoring model, so it's going to be slightly higher. And I get that a lot. I have people that go, oh, I'm a 740, yay! And then their mortgage, their lender pulls it up and they're a 6, maybe a 692. And they need a 700 to get the better rate. So what's happened is the algorithm has changed on that, on the scoring model. And from credit, from mortgage company to mortgage company, even their scores can change. I have seen, um, for example, someone went to mortgage company A, and they were at a 720. Mortgage the same day, because people shop for rates, mortgage company B pulled it, and they were down to a 702. Nothing had changed on the credit report. It was just the scoring model and the credit model, the algorithm, what, what that particular lender is looking for. 30% of your credit score is made up of what your credit file contains. That's perfect right there. So share debt amongst the cards, meaning break up the balances. You don't want to have a really high balance on any one card. 30, since 30% 30 of the score is made up, you want to keep the cards 30 or below what the credit limit is. I also suggest you use them every six months. Otherwise, you might get a nice, polite letter from your credit card, you know, the company that issued it, saying they closed it for your protection. Well, I don't know how that's your protection. Basically, what they're doing and try, trying to do is close out their own risk. Even if you charge gas or groceries on it, um, try not to close credit cards because we're going to get to it in a minute. Credit loves history. The longer you have an a, a account open, the higher your score is going to be. I have one client who's never made more than $36,000 her entire life. She has a credit card that has been open since 1989. And then she just opened another one probably, I want to say, in 2000. She's 800. So your income does not, you know, it has no relation whatsoever to your FICO score. 
Your FICO score is strictly based on how you pay your debts. So if you need to get an extra bump, they always threaten to take off the authorized user. Now to be a legitimate authorized user, it's got to be an immediate family member, fiance, someone else living in the home. Not somebody that you bought maybe. Um, this was really common when people were looking for credit. They would go to these companies who would sell them and piggyback them on someone else's credit, which was totally illegal. And if they get caught, there's big fines. But if you legitimately have an authorized user, this is also a great way to give your kids a start if they're going to college and you want to build up their credit score. We did this for my stepson. Um, he graduated with a 760 FICO score from just, you know, just being creative. We knew how to work the system so he had a fi high FICO so that he would score well because he wanted to become a police officer. He had his master's <coughs> in criminal justice but, they, justice, but they were laying off. Instead, he became a firefighter, which we're happy because he doesn't tend to get shot at as much as policemen. So. <laughs> Um, but they, they looked at the uh, FICO score too when they were interviewing because certain jobs will look at it. They kind of base and judge you, but I don't have to tell you guys that. You probably know it more than I do. Um, okay, the next one, please. So people say, well, I want to cut my credit you know, limit because I'm afraid to have that high of a limit. Don't be afraid of it. The, better, the higher the credit limit, just use it responsibly, the better off you are. This says maintain balances below 10%, uh, that's not so much anymore. But make sure your limit's reported. Now, this is a big one, revolving debt, you should always keep your own credit as well as your spouse. It's good to have joint, but it's also great to have separate accounts. In case there's a job loss, a death in the family, divorce, something like that. I mean, you wanna have your own credit file. If you're tied in there jointly, when you go through a divorce, what happens is it's going to get closed out. You're going to end up with nothing. Um, and what's really funny is women were allowed to vote, but they couldn't have their own credit card until 1976. You had to have a husband or a father or someone, uh, a man on your credit account. Isn't that crazy? So you can also transfer debt to one spouse. Maybe they could pull something out. Business, utilize credit. So this is a problem with businesses. If anyone's been a business in, owner in here before, a lot of people make the mistake of commingling their business credit with their personal credit, and it's just going to lead to a downhill spiral. You really need to keep that um, separate because most banks require that you sign a personal guarantee. You don't have to. I mean, that's another a whole different section I can come in here and teach you guys about is business credit and how to get small business funded if they're, you know, for business credit. But what happens is as soon as you sign that personal guarantee, it's going to show up on your personal credit report as soon as you default. And you don't have the same consumer protection laws in business. Three days after default in business, you can be, they can be in there suing you. Consumer typically takes about six months. So you have a lot more leeway under consumer protection than you do under business. We spoke about that. Longer the history, the better. Okay, four. The mix of credit. Now, this can be important. Typically, an American Express, Visa, MasterCard, Discover Card will hold uh, more weight in the credit scoring than typically department store cards. Reason being is department stores are a little more lax. Um, it's a little harder to get the other ones. And the FICO scoring gives them more weight in the model scoring. This makes up kind of the perfect credit card or credit score if you have three to five open revolving credit cards. A mortgage account. We can shut that off because it says we started in 14 months or 14 minutes. We can get through that. Auto loan and equity lines of credit. Well, unfortunately, a lot of us can't get that now because our houses still haven't recovered. But in the good old days, a perfect world where inquiries are 10% of the credit score. Now, the general rule is they realize that people shop rates. So if you're going for an auto loan, typically on the FICO scoring model, it will give you 
30 days of inquiries before it counts as one. So they lump them all together. So don't be afraid to shop around for the best rate and think it's getting all these inquiries will hit you. The inquiries will catch up if you start going from credit card to credit card to credit card and applying, and especially if you're getting denied. So before anyone applies for a credit card or new credit, I would suggest they take a peek at their FICO score to see what it is and see if anything needs to be adjusted. Mortgage, you get a 45 day grace period. Inquiries will affect the score for one year, and they can cost anywhere from zero to 50 points. Believe it or not, I have seen 50 points. Um, gentleman just hit up everybody he could possibly think. I mean, for months looking for credit. I, I swear, he must have been in front of his computer shopping. Does your free report, uh, does your free report count as an inquiry? No. Anytime a consumer pulls their own credit report, it does not show up. It's what they call a soft inquiry. A hard inquiry is when they apply for like a mortgage, a car loan, or a credit card. What about credit checks for uh, like background checks for you're applying for a job and they say, you know, it's okay to go ahead and check your credit? It's yeah, typically those don't, they, they're a soft inquiry again because it's for job purpose. You're not looking for a credit extension. Usually the inquiries start hurting you when it's um, like if you're applying for Amex or Visa or MasterCard or a car loan, something like that. That's when they'll start adding up. But even the first time you know you apply in that 30-day period, it's only going to be maybe a point or two. What about you know Discover Card has that new where they put their your FICO score on, mm -hmm. your, on your statement? Does that count as inquiry? And are they Not at all. No, they consider that a soft inquiry, and those are actually pretty good. I love the credit cards now that are giving your credit report and your credit score. That's also a good way to deter identity theft, which is another issue. Um, identity theft is just horrifying. We'll talk about that in a moment. So anyway, so you can see the 30-day and 45-day buff buffer period there for our auto and mortgage, which we spoke about. See, personal would be for job, promotional and job-related, insurance and account reviews. So right here is the credit scoring chart. Any questions? Is, it, is that um, is that slide that you have there? Is that available somewhere else other than? I can send it to you if you'd like to give okay. me your email address. I'd be happy to. All right. Thank you. I'm also going to leave a couple of the books that I wrote right there for your library. If anyone, I don't, oh. do you guys have a library here where you yes, can look at books? You. Perfect, explains a lot of what I've been talking about today. Yes? Um, just to go back a little bit, so if you add an authorized user, just mm -hmm. so say I add my girlfriend, that would benefit her credit score, not the cardholder? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And there is an opt-out. Unfortunately, um, if something ever happens and an authorized, like say you get uh, added on as hers, mm -hmm. and for something, some financial disaster hurts, it's not going to affect your FICO score. Okay. And then um, as far as if you ask about a limit increase, does that count as a soft inquiry or anything like that? It would be because it would be coming from someone that you currently have credit with. Okay. And then uh, it, 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 would it be recommended so it, it, the Discover card, I made the mistake when I you know, went to, I didn't know anything about it, so I went to buy a home, I, I closed my credit card, so it actually hurt Oh, me. ouch. It, yeah. I closed them. Um, so would it be prudent to apply for a Discover card like that if you, if you did do that just for the free credit report? For the credit report and also to raise your FICO score up again. Typically what happens anytime you open a new account, your score is going to go down a little bit because it takes six months to season that account to get a payment history. Then after six months you'll see your account pop up. A lot of people say, well I haven't changed you know, my spending history, I still have the same credit cards, I just got a new mortgage, why did my score go down? It's not for the inquiries, it's just the FICO wants to wait and see how they pay and how they season that account for the next six months, so that's why the score decreased.